Sage Wanderer coming at you from my van down by the river. So on this historic day after the Singapore conference with Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un of North Korea, uh, I'm talking a bit about the process that led up to this. In a previous video, I talked about the role that uh, Donald Trump's previous uh, professional negotiation skills played in all of this. Uh, but you know, you can't talk about this whole thing without talking about a kind of a strange character who you wouldn't think would be involved in such things. But you can't talk about North Korea and this new summit without talking about Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman of all people. And you know, I'll admit to being one of these guys that really got all over him on social media for, um, you know, for, I thought, you know, giving aid and comfort to the enemy. You know, I, I, I saw him as kind of a Jane Fonda character, like when she went over uh, to the Vietnamese and, you know, to the North Vietnamese and, you know, was seen riding their, you know, uh, cannon barrels like a like a cowgirl on a horse, you know, and just uh, like posing in that position there on top of a cannon that was taking American lives. I'll never forgive that woman for that. And most people who uh, uh, were around to know the greatest generation still hold a grudge as well. So <clears throat> at any rate, um, I kind of saw Rodman as, as giving aid and comfort to the enemy and I was not happy about it. But Rodman's side of the story is a little different. You know, he claims to not really understand how he got booked into doing a charity event in North Korea, but you know, whatever, it found him he found himself there where he meets this little man. And one thing I can say about Dennis Rodman in this story is that it does kind of give you a glimpse into Dennis Rodman's heart. He does have a childlike heart. And and you can see this when he kind of breaks down and cries when he talks about it. And I watched him on Donald Trump's show, Celebrity Apprentice. And you can also see his heart at work there. And, you know, you can say what you want about the guy and his past, who he is and what he's done. But at his heart, at, at who the guy is, he kind of reminds me of a little kid that's just like, hey, how's it going? My name's Dennis. You know, so he meets Rocket Man and, you know, he doesn't judge him. He doesn't make any assumptions. He isn't afraid of him, you know, because he, he doesn't really know who he is, I think. And they engage in a bromance. They just kind of hit it off. They become friends. And Dennis is like, why shouldn't I be friends with him? He's, he's treating me decent. He's been a decent person to me. Why not? you know, accept his friendship and engage with this person. And of course, you know, the backlash was tremendous. And he did undergo, Dennis Rodman did undergo a whole lot of, of uh, hatred over his friendship with this guy. But, you know, he doesn't know anything about politics. He's a basketball player. He doesn't try to know. He'll tell you right up front, I don't want to know about politics. I just know that this guy seems like a decent guy to me. And he told me that if we would, you know, kind of treat him fairly because he felt like that their country had been deceived by America repeatedly and that if, if he was felt like he was being treated fairly and that he could have a fair negotiation that he was willing to talk about denuclearization on the Korean pen peninsula uh, but he, he needed to be treated with some respect and he needed to be uh, he needed to be he needed to deal with some people that he trusted like he trusted Rodman he's like I trusted trust you I know if you shook my hand that this would be a deal and uh, but I don't feel that way about everybody from your country but if they would talk with me and, and they meet these criteria, I'd love to have a conference and a sit down. And so Rodman takes this to Obama, who basically laughs him out of his office. Um, you know, Obama just thought the whole thing was stupid and Dennis Rodman didn't know what he was talking about. And they continued the pattern of isolation of North Korea, which can, you know, if you're being isolated, if you're being shunned, I'm sorry, if you're doing that to me and, and I don't know, we live in a house or together or we live in a community together and, you know, you're leading a campaign to shun, shun me and shut me out. I'm probably going to buy bullets. I'm probably going to buy armor. I'm probably going to start, you know, building a moat around my house because I figure you're plotting against me. I figure you don't, you know, you're not engaging with me. You're ignoring me. So then we must be enemies and I must protect myself. And so you get this siege mentality. And I think that's uh, an example of what was going on in the previous administrations who sought to isolate this guy. And Rodman, Dennis Rodman of all people, this kind of goofy basketball guy, you know, he was able to uh, knit this connection because he was friends with Donald Trump. So it kind of goes like this. It's, this is a story that's going to, I think, go down in history as one of the most interesting and, and unbelievable tales in politics. Is that, you know, 
Rodman goes to Obama. Obama laughs him off. Rodman's frustrated. He keeps being friends with him. He keeps going back over there. He keeps trying to get Obama to listen to him, and Obama won't. Meanwhile, uh, Rodman is on Donald Trump's television show, and he's establishing a close friendship with Donald Trump. And, you know, he treats Donald Trump the same way that he treats Rocket Man. He's just like, I don't care what they say about you. You know, you've treated me good and you're a decent guy to me. So, hey, my name's Dennis, <laughs> you know, and uh, you got to love it the way that this guy just kind of treats everybody equally. I mean, we could all learn a lot, you know, and be just you need to be like more like Dennis, you know, but. Ironically, this friend of Dennis, Donald Trump, becomes the next president. And so now he bounces it off Donald Trump. Hey, I got this buddy in North Korea that wants to talk. And Donald Trump's like, I'll talk to him. Yeah, let's talk to him. Let's work this out. Man, if Donald Trump doesn't go down as one of the greatest presidents of all time, if this story doesn't go down as one of the most interesting stories in history, I'll eat, I'll eat this hat right here. But I need some ketchup because it's kind of dry. But, <laughs> you know, hey, I could eat my hat. But the bottom line is, regardless of what Donald Trump does from here on out, you got to give him kudos for this. And really, is Dennis Rodman up for the for the Nobel Peace Prize? Is, has Dennis Rodman's simple, childlike heart where he'll just pop up and say, hey, my name's Dennis. You know, who are you? That kind of little children kind of thinking and way of being is... The, He's going to go down as one of the greatest peacemakers of our time. Wow. Who'd have thunk it? All right. God is saving our republic.